some good ones. How do we break free from nationalism? You know, I think most of the problems in Islam all comes down to the nafs. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helps us understand or gives us tools in the Quran to deal with the nafs. For example, Allah reminds us where we're going. Allah says, Kullu nafs in there ikatil mawt. Every soul is going to taste death. Your nationalism is not going to save you on the day of judgment. No matter how big you think you are. And by the way, just to be very, very frank, the nations you're so proud of are rubbish. <laughs> Pakistan's a failed state. Bangladesh is killing Muslims at the moment. Where else are you guys from? You, it's a failed state. Azad Kashmir has no political authority. Kashmir, the other part, is taken over by India. I mean, wh wh who are you? Who are you? Who are you? You're nobody. We're no one. Our nationalism is, has been cursed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at our nations. We can't even defend our own Muslims. We can't even feed our own people. And you're proud of where you're from? SubhanAllah, I'm Greek, I'm not even proud where I'm from. And Greece had a bigger empire than you. We, we, we've got a greater history than you. You're what, you started in 1950s? Bangladesh, 1971? And you think you're somebody. I'm sorry this is bakwa, sorry this is crazy, this is rubbish. I get so angry when I see this because it's a disease in the ummah. You know why? Wallahi, we have black brothers, they convert to Islam. Pious brothers, better than most of the Asian brothers sometimes. And they go to an Asian chacha. Say, Ya Chacha, Assalamu Alaikum Rahmatullah, uh, you know, I love you to bits, I see you in the masjid, can I ask for your daughter's hand? He's gonna have a heart attack! <laughs> yeah, Galima, yeah? What the heck is this guy? Yes or no? And I'm telling you, even some of you have this in your hearts now. Even you have the. You, look, I know you guys, right? I'm in the Asian community, I'm married into the Asian community, okay? So I know Wagwan. I know what's going on. Even if you're pious, our hearts sometimes, you know, will never allow our daughters to marry a black man. Never. Forget that. A Punjabi can't even marry a Kashmiri. A Kashmiri can't even marry a Bengali. An Afghani can't even marry an Afghani. <laughs> yeah, do you see the problem here? Nationalism is destructive. It's destructive. And it's one of the main issues, I think, why there's a lot of sisters who are pious that are unmarried. Because they can't find someone within the community and therefore the door is shut for them. They can't go outside of the community and this is a shame. So remember where we're going, death. And, and death will break us, nationalism is not going to help us. It's not going to take us anywhere. And I'm not saying this to offend you, Ikhwan and Akhawat. We should be proud of our language. Urdu is a beautiful, I mean, Allama Iqbal, what a beautiful poet. What a beautiful poet. You know, there's one poetry I like that was translated into English, he said, you know, there's a, there's a big question that's, that's affected the East, which is, does God exist? But I give them a new question. Does the self exist? You don't even know who you are and you're thinking about God. And once you know who you are, you know Allah exists. And in themselves, do they not reflect? Do they not see? So respect your language, respect your cultural customs that are not against Islam. But don't make it now your creed, your aqidah. It is the yardstick, it's the, the lenses, the glasses you put on your, your face to see the world. And it's all judged by those nationalistic boundaries. We are one ummah, khalas. Whether you like it or not, we bleed in the same color, we smile in the same language and we laugh in the same language. And we eat with the same hand. Yeah? Come on, we're one. We are one and remember this. Remember this, okay? You know, my parents are non-Muslim. But they don't have Asabiyah. When I was growing up, my dad said, Oh, forget Greece. You know, I don't want you to be defined by Greek. I want you to be defined by your human nature. Turks came to my house. Blacks, Asians, whites, greens, blues, purples, rainbows. Everybody came into the house. And that's my dad. He's not even Muslim. So why would my dad, who's not a Muslim, follow the values that we should be following? This is why I'm upset. Because at home I see Islam, but they're not Muslim. But when we go, when I go to the Muslim community, I don't see Islam. How does that make me feel? And other reverts. Wallahi, and we complain about the EDL. <laughs> There's more racism in our community than the EDL. Listen to me carefully. I don't care how much you've been beaten up. 
There is more racism in the Muslim community than the EDL. At least the EDL, they have Asians, black Sikhs in the group. You know, we can't even... Uh, you, even in Bangladesh, right? A Chittagonian can't marry a Sileti. Isn't that right? It's terrible. And I think really the only way to break nationalism is to to belittle it a lot, you know? Because it's all based on ego. And remember where you came from. Allah tries to break our nafs and says, you were a baby. You could even wipe your own backside or keep your head up. And now you think, you know, you're something. You were a despised fluid. A despised fluid and you think you're special. So these kind of principles and realities will make us realize that we're actually nothing. Only... Allah gives us the izzah by believing Him and worshipping Him. Nationalism won't do that. Even the Prophet ﷺ, when he took over Mecca, I believe, he stamped his foot, he said, Nationalism is under my foot. Think about this. A few years ago, Ikhwan, relatively 10, 50, 60 years ago, 70 years ago, some guy, a colonialist, who killed your forefathers, drank their blood almost, and burnt their books went on a map and he drew some lines on a map and you define yourself by those lines. Think about that. 